Hi everyone, I'm Paul LaFever, one of the Zojo software engineers, and I'm here to talk to you about Zojo for Android. Now it may seem like we've been working on Zojo for a long time, and the reason is because we have. We first started looking into Zojo for Android way back in 2017. And that was while we were doing other things, of course, but that was our standard R&D process to see, you know, what, what approach would make the most sense for bringing Zojo to Android. And then in 2019, we started work on the prototype. And this is what was demoed at XTC in Miami in uh, May of 2019. And throughout the rest of the year, we were working on adding Android support to the IDE itself and starting work on the Android framework. 2020 continued with lots of work, uh, still continuing on the IDE and the framework, and then also work on the trans compiler. 2021 continued all the previous work with more and more things being added, and then we also uh, implemented the debugger. And now we're at 2022, and Zojo for Android is in pre-release testing, and we are focusing on bug fixes. And I'm super excited about Zojo being in pre-release testing. It's great to have lots of people using Zojo for Android and testing things out. Uh, we've actually been in pre-release testing since the end of November 2021. And our current schedule is that we put out pre-release builds about every couple weeks. And if you are a pro license holder, you can test. So I encourage you to head on over to the test forum and Take a look at what the current version is of the Zojo pre-release for Android. Download it and uh, give it a try. Let us know how it works for you. Um, try making something and see how it goes. Forum users have so far been pretty positive about what they're seeing. Uh, we got some uh, positive uh, feedback. People giving us good uh, reports of bugs, lots of people trying to migrate their iOS apps to Android and uh, learning some things. So uh, we're super excited about how all that is progressing. Now I want to talk to you a bit about the Android architecture and how it goes about, how Zojo goes about building your Android apps. So of course it starts with Zojo itself. We are using the Zojo compiler toolchain to uh, process your Zojo code, check it for errors, that sort of thing. And then that gets handed off using the all new Zojo Trans compiler to the Kotlin compiler tool chain. And this is what's gonna actually build your Android app so that it can be run on some sort of Android device. The apps that we are building are called Android Runtime apps. And you'll often see that uh, abbreviated as ART. And these are pretty much the standard apps you see on Android. They run under the Android virtual machine. And uh, they're pretty much what just about every app you see on Android is built with. We support a wide variety of Android operating systems, starting with Android 6, also known as Marshmallow, and then moving on to Android 7 or Nougat, Android 8 Oreo, Android 9 is Pi, and then they gave up with the uh, the silly little names, and then it's just Android uh, 10, 11, and 12. So we support six and up, essentially, and that's great. Uh, it's possible we may drop six in the coming months. We're still monitoring that, but uh, we'll have wide support for a variety of Android versions. And of course, you can submit your Zojo made Android apps to the Google Play Store so that other people can have easy access to them. But of course, being Android, and unlike iOS, you can also easily sideload apps onto an Android device, so you don't necessarily have to uh, put your apps in the Play Store. Speaking of the Play Store, we have one app currently up in there. The Zojo Cats Up sample project is available in the Play Store, so you can uh, grab that now, even if you're not necessarily testing Zojo for Android, and check it out. And keep an eye, keep an eye on the Zojo Inc. Um, developer in there, because we'll be adding some more apps in the coming weeks, so you can see how things look.
Now, what about the Android UI components that are going to be available? Well, we're pretty pleased with the uh, wide number of components that we have available in this first version of Android. In fact, I think we're going to be shipping with more UI components than what was included in the first version of iOS when that shipped. Uh, pretty much all the common ones that you're used to seeing are going to be available. You can see the uh, these are the library icons of the various controls. I'll let you pause and uh, scan these more closely later, but you know what you what you expect and what you can see in the uh, various demos and things is is what's going to be available. So lots lots of controls to choose from. In addition. For the Android framework, we have a lot of the Zojo framework available to you in Android. It's not going to be all of it. Uh, there's a few things that will be missing, but most of the primary things that you are used to working with are going to be available here. I also think we are actually shipping with more framework uh, items than uh, the first version of iOS had. So you can see that there's a lot of stuff in here, and hopefully with everything that we're providing, you'll be able to make the type of Android apps that you want. So I want to mention the debugger very briefly. Uh, there is a debugger in Android, which is great. And you have a few different ways you can debug your apps. You can debug them in the Android emulator, which is handy because that runs on your computer. Uh, it's its own kind of little window and you can use it there. The downside of the Android emulator is it is just an emulator, so it doesn't support all the features of a, an Android device. Um, you know, things like motion and location, they can be a little wonky. Uh, in the emulator, among other things. The emulators also can be a little sluggish at times. So we also support uh, debugging directly on device. And this is great. You can do this either using USB or Wi-Fi. Um, I believe Wi-Fi requires Android 12 or later, but USB is great. Keeps your, your device charged while you're debugging to it. And I find it is much, much faster to debug to an actual device and you get, you know, better compatibility testing because it's an actual real device device and not an emulator that's trying to pretend to be one. So this is great. We're super excited about this. When you start Android, you're going to get a project chooser just like you get with all the other uh, versions of Zojo, except there's a now a new option, the Android project type right under iOS and you just choose that and then you end up in the Android workspace. And this should look super familiar to you. It, it looks very similar to iOS really. Uh, you can see all the controls in the library. You can see them in the screen positioned. You can see on, in the navigator the list of the controls as well. So if, if you've done any work at all in iOS uh, making mobile apps there, uh, when you fire up your Android, it should all look very familiar and easy to work with. Uh, shouldn't have any trouble at all. And to help people get started when they're taking a look at Android in pre-release form, but certainly when it's released as well, we'll have a lot of sample projects. So, so many. Right now we have 47. I just counted them. And that's quite a few. Quite a few that are all just Android-specific sample projects. You can see a few that are popping up here. Some of these sample projects are actually uh, Android versions of sample projects for either desktop or iOS and uh, can serve as a great way to see how similar or in some cases exactly the same the code is. So there's a lot of sample projects for uh, you to go through when you're getting started. And now I'd like to wrap things up by giving you a little bit more of a deeper dive into the Calculate Tip sample project. We'll just take a look at that in Zojo itself and then run it and, and see how that looks. So I'll end here. Thanks everyone for watching.